Alrighty, how's it going? Long time no see and welcome to this complete guide on building your Hi-Fi home where we go from this to this. Okay, we're back for another Skyrim guide and this time we'll be looking at how to build a hearthfire home and in this video I'll be showing you how to plan your home, how to work out exactly what materials you'll need, how to efficiently build your home, where to find a steward and I'll be showing you all the options for each wing inside and out. So uh, let's just crack on. Okay, so this is primarily a guide to building your home, but a little bit of info on Hearthfire Homes is kind of necessary. Uh, and remember, I'll be leaving links in the description for full details on everything. Now, you can purchase land to build your Hearthfire home in three locations. Lakeview Manor near Falkreath, Winstead Manor in Yarmarch near Morthal, and Hoyarkin Hall in a pale near Dawnstar. And barring the different locations, they're all pretty much the same as in how you build them and what wings you can add, etc. However, each one has a unique add-on. With Winstead Manor, you guess a fish hatchery. Lakeview Manor, you guess an apiary. And with Hell Yarkin Hall, you get a grain mill for making flour. All of them cost 5,000 gold and come with various quests to purchase the land. Helyarkin Hall, you have to complete the quest Waking Nightmare and Kill the Giants. Lakeview Manor, you have to complete the quests Rare Gifts and Kill a Bandit Leader. Winstead Manor, you have to complete the quest Laid to Rest, which in my opinion is a quest worth doing anyway. I have left links to some of my older videos in the description on how to become the Thane in each of these holes. Now it's worth noting, you don't have to be Thane to buy the land. However, if you do, you'll get a house car who will help protect your home. But for the purposes of this video, we'll be building Hull Yarkin Hall in the Pale. And the reason why we're doing this, I think there's a glitch in my game where I don't have to do any of the quests. I just literally buy the land and I also get a house car without becoming Thane. Now I'm guessing most of you guys will have to do the quests. And let me do, uh, know if you uh, do or don't. Okay, we just pop over and have a little chat with the Yar. So, yeah, you see, I don't have to do any quests, but you guys probably will do. Um, as I said before, there's going to be a link in the description for you um, to show you how to actually become Thane or actually follow those quests up to whatever point you want to go to. Okay, let's go and look at our new land. Now, in terms of which home you should go for, well, that's pretty much a personal decision. The kids are happiest in Lakeview Manor, but sometimes spouses uh, worry about the wildlife endangering the children, uh, if you ask how they're doing. Or conversely, they may say the house is perfect. Personally, I've yet to have a wife complain about it, but apparently it does happen. Winstab Manor, you may find adopted girls seem to dislike the homes. They will sometimes say, this place is scary, there are monsters in the swamp. I just know it, but the boys love it. Hell Yarkin Hall, some adopted boys dislike the location, saying it's too cold to play outside, whilst the girls will say how nice it is. I personally always use Lakeview Manor as my family home and just use mods to make everyone happy. So now we're here, we have a few things we can use to begin building a house. A drafting table, a carpenter's workbench, an anvil, a chest and a starter log pile. So we'll take a look at the drafting table. Now this is where you actually plan your house. And then you come to the carpenter's workbench and this is where you actually make it. Now there is a beginner's guide to homesteading there if you want to read that. It's got lots of... Uh, hints and stuff like this but by the time you watch this video you can know it all anyway that's there now you have your anvil this is where you uh, craft all your nails your hinges and stuff like that and then we come to the chest now I'll actually look at this in more detail later on so I'll show you how I actually make the house 
So you essentially have two options in the way that you build your home. You can build the house piecemeal as you go along in the game, or you can store all your building materials and build it in one hit, which is the way I do it. Whichever way you do it, you're going to need an absolute crap ton of materials. So I've included a link to a couple of sites which show you exactly how much of any particular material you'll need to build a particular item. So the idea is to plan your home exactly before you start and compile a shopping list of building materials and then gather them. And don't worry about this, I'll be showing you all the options open to you both internally and externally so you can decide in advance. Now. A bit of advice to remember is to do a hard save at the beginning stage and after you completed the main hall. This is one of the main reasons that I have all the materials collected before I start building. It gives me the opportunity to build a house in a certain way, see if I like it, test it out. If it's good, I carry on, but if I don't like it, I can go back to that save and start again with very, very little inconvenience. Another thing that can be really handy is to get a steward and the way this works is once a homestead includes uh, a basic small house the option to appoint a steward becomes available though I've heard there's an occasional glitch if you recruit them too soon so I always wait until I have the main hall built. I've included the link to a page which shows what NPCs can be recruited as a steward and I want to know that I've tried several steward mods and none have been particularly good so I strongly recommend you staying with the vanilla ones but it's up to you. To recruit your steward you simply hire one of the NPC options as listed as a follower then ask them to come with you, travel to the bill site they should then approach you and volunteer for the job or if not you can simply ask them yourself once you're there you will need to first build at least the small house as mentioned before um, before the option to hire them appears. Your steward will patrol the exterior of your property as well as use various items in and around the house. Uh, once a steward has been chosen for a particular homestead, the choice is permanent. You cannot replace that steward with someone else later. Now, one of the reasons why I particularly recommend that you do get a steward is you can ask them to do things uh, like make improvements to the house, which will allow you several options. A uh, steward not only patrols and protects your home, but they can also buy a lot of stuff for you, like a carriage driver, a bard, a horse if you've built the stable, a cow and up to three chickens if you've built the animal pen option. They can get you building materials, they can furnish a home for gold, which is a real time saver if obviously you have the gold. A full list of all this stuff is on the linked webpage. And as I mentioned earlier, once the steward has been chosen, they cannot be dismissed unless they die. However, they can be moved to a different homestead by recruiting them as a follower, then following the same recruitment procedures at the new homestead. Now, if a steward is moved to a new homestead, you will be unable to hire a different steward in the homestead where they originally held their position. So, for example, if they were the steward in Hell Yarkin and you move them to Lakeview, you don't have an option to replace that steward at Hell Yarkin. That place will never have a steward again. So, it's worth bearing that in mind. Okay, we're getting close to starting, but just a few more things. You're going to need an absolute crap ton of stuff like clay, stones, logs, and iron. Now, Iron you'll have to buy, steel or mine as you go along, but clay and stone are on, uh, on site at each homestead, so just find the deposits, start mining and then just go off for a cup of tea. You have a look in each house, obviously they'll be in different positions, but just look around and like I say, just start mining, bugger off, have a cup of tea, coffee, have a drink, go down to the pub, whatever you like. There you go, and some clay deposits. So yeah, once you've got all that stuff, you're then going to need some sawn logs. Now, you can buy your logs at any mill. They don't have to be near your homestead. And in this case, I've gone to Riverwood, uh, so you just buy as much as you need, and they'll deliver it to, to your home. It's as simple as that. Now, this dialogue will drive you up the wall, because... Uh, <laughs> you can't you can't choose how much you go buy you just have to keep on going spamming it and spamming it and spamming it but anyway eventually you get what you need and it'll be delivered there so we're good to go 
Okay, now the best advice I can give you is to collect all your materials and deposit them in this particular chest. So everything is in one place and you'll see how convenient it makes the whole building process once we start. Because what you can do is then just take everything into your inventory. So you'll be slow walking, but you haven't got very far to walk to the workbench or the drafting table. This makes a huge difference to uh, the whole build. Um, and as you'll see later on. Okay, so all the hard work is done, now it's time to make our home. Now the first thing we have to do is build the small house and later we'll turn this into an entryway, we'll deal with that later. Uh, and I strongly suggest at the very least you also build the smelter so you can turn your ores into ingots. And now we just approach the uh, drafting table and that'll bring up all the options. And we go for the small house layout, I want to create this item, yes. I'm only going to do this a couple of times just so you get a really good idea of what you've got to do. Uh, then you go to the carpenter's work, workbench and then you build the foundation. Now you see while gathering all the materials uh, together and putting them in the chest is so valuable because we can literally build the whole house from start to finish. And I know it means you're walking around like a slugger uh, while you're doing it but uh, this really is the most efficient way in my opinion. Um, yeah, so we'll, uh, I'll always build the outside stuff first anyway. And you don't actually have to uh, do this. And some of these are mods, by the way, so they won't uh, apply to you. And once we've got all this done, we're going to build the main hole. And all we do is simply go back to the drafting table and choose the main hall. Do you want to create this item? Yes, you do. And then back to the carpenter's workbench. And simply rinse and repeat. Okay, now let's go and see what we've made. Now I'm not going to give you any outside shots at all. I'll be doing that at the end of the video so you can get choose the uh, aesthetic look you want for the exterior of your property, if that's important to you. Okay, here we go. And this at the moment is a small house. Nothing in these are all mod stuff by the way, so ignore this. And this is the main hole. Now I always turn the uh, small house into the entryway late on in the build. Okay, so to furnish your hall or your rooms, any room, go to the uh, crafting table here and then just start building. Now hopefully you would have actually uh, made a list of what you need, you'd have all your, your, your materials ready and so you can do the whole lot in one hit. And what I'll do, I'll show you like a fully fitted out, obviously vanilla. Uh, a hallway. I have to use the one, I use one, sorry, in my Lakeview Manor as a reference. It's a time consuming business, this. There's a lot of stuff. Okay, let's have a look at it. And there you go, all the halls are the same, whichever location you're in, your main halls, your entry halls and stuff like that. There you go. Pretty cool. And this is the middle storage area. And upstairs you've got uh, standard two beds, I think for your children, your followers, or whatever, actually no, be for your followers, you need to build a, the bedroom. So adoption, that's your bedroom, if you choose not to take the bedroom wing. And upstairs there. Now you know you do get an alchemy table and an enchanting table, which negates the, whether you need a tower or not for alchemy and uh, uh, enchanting. And it also comes with a cellar. And same thing, 
all around the house you're going to find these little crafting tables or workbenches and that's how you furnish that particular area. Now again, some of this stuff in here is a mod-like or put in by a mod so you won't be getting it. All the stuff we're making here is in the vanilla build. And again, you can see how much stuff it is. I'm just going through this little section with you. I won't bother with... Um, uh, on every single different type of wing doing the build. I'm just demonstrating it for this part. And let's take a little look. Now things like the Staff Enchanter and stuff you're not going to get, obviously. And some other stuff that's put in by the mods. And here's your little smithing home. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. So to um, make your um, small house into an entrance way, uh, just come back to the drafting table and just convert it there. Now I do this after I've done the main hall uh, because there was, I'm not sure if there still is, a glitch um, with hiring stewards and stuff like that if you did it too early. So I always wait till I've crafted the main hall, furnished it and then I do it just in case. And that may not still be the case but... Uh, Better safe than sorry. So I'll just show that you go down there and convert it into a hallway. And if you look on the carpenter's workbench, there's nothing for you to do. It's done automatically. It doesn't make any difference to the building whatsoever. It's just how you can furnish it. Okay. Okay, and it's the same old story. To furnish this, simply come to the carpenter's workbench and do it again. Yeah, you're gonna have a look at my, uh, the next video, uh, where I'll turn this into a crafting home. Yeah, I've got some good mods in this. Okay. Are you there? And we'll have a look. And this is the entranceway of a vanilla hearthfire home. A few little bits to get uh, bobs again uh, from mods, but not too much in here. It's pretty cool, actually. I do like the hearthfire homes. They really work. Okay, now we're up to building the wings. So you come to the drafting table and you've got a whole choice you've got three choices for each wing east wing north wing and west wing now this is why i say you make a hard save uh, before you begin the process and after you've done the haul so you choose which one you do this is the last time i'm actually do the building part of it um, after that i'll just be showing you what the wings look like inside and at the end of the video on the outside so we're going to build the armory for example here Same old process. And that's done. And that's what the armory will look like if it's fully kitted out. So let's go and have a look at all the other options you've got. And next up on the east wing, we have the kitchen. which is pretty cool. And the final option on the East Wing is the library. Now the library is a tower and I'll show you the actual outside of that later on. Uh, but this is the ground floor and this is the upper floor. And then there's a ladder that goes up into the tower. 
Now, the first on the north wing is the storage room. Now, the only reason to get this is for the flat roof. You don't really need this storage. And then again, on the north wing, you've got the trophy room, which is pretty cool. And the final option on the north wing is the alchemy tower. Now this is the ground floor. Now bear in mind, as I mentioned before, uh, you can actually build these elsewhere in the house as well. So, and this is the upper floor. So these may not be uh, worth it unless you like the aesthetic of a tower. And finally we come to the three options on the west wing and the first is the uh, bedroom necessary if you want to adopt children now second we have the enchanting tower as mentioned before we can also have an enchanting table somewhere else so this is a ground floor of that and the upper floor as well not necessary again unless you want the aesthetics external aesthetics that is and the final option is the greenhouse on the west wing handy for an alchemist that's what I say okay so that's all done now some of you may be more interested in the external aesthetics so here's a little montage of what each wing will look like and you can plan accordingly if this obviously is more important to you. Now personally, I always go for the bedroom, storage room and armory for my family home as that gives large balconies on three sides of the house so the kids can run around and play around the house. But in all the other homes, I don't really care. I just make them for their utility. And don't forget, you can build all three houses. You're not just restricted to one. Okay, so outside we've got the three towers, which is the... Uh, library, Alchemy and Enchanters Towers. They look pretty cool and you get a beautiful uh, view from them but they are not necessary unless you particularly like this aesthetic. A lot of people do obviously because they do make uh, the house look great. And also you can have any combination of these so uh, your options are well open. Okay next up we have the uh, kitchen, the trophy room, and the greenhouse I actually quite, kind of quite like this look like a proper manor house and there's your greenhouse Okay, so coming up now, the one is, is the setup that I have for every family home. But then again, I change internally with mods. Um, this is my home at Lakeview Manor. And that's where I have the armory, the storage room and the bedroom. Now, the reason why I like this for the family room, as I mentioned before, is so the kiddies can all go around and play. And in fact, a lot of the NPCs could just go up there and uh, look out so, over the distance. So that's it, there are three options. You can make any combination of all of them. So, uh, well, that's it. A lot of work, but at last you've got your new home. Now, the reason I did this video is so many people regret their choices and wish they'd done things differently. So now hopefully you can see exactly what your options are before you build your new home. Just don't forget to hard save before you build and again after you completed the main hall. So you can go back because once built you can't change any of these wings. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video but even more importantly you found it useful. See you later. Love you. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like, leave a comment and hit the bell next to the subscribe button after you subscribed obviously. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter. See you later.